Welcome everyone to Mailfuzz TV, I'm Peter and today I'm going to be talking about The Twilight Zone, it's Season 5, Episode 19, it's called Night Call. And it is impossible not to think of the song from uh, Drive, the movie Drive, when I, when I hear that title. But yes, welcome to the show, uh, spoilers for the episode as always. It's a very simple episode, it's a very simple premise, and a very honestly simple resolution, which I think was the right call in, in this case. It's a very enjoyable episode that really, its strengths come from the story turning out to be a very simple message about regret and about someone looking back on their life and the decisions they've made. But the real star of this show is the, the, is the, is the creepiness of it, it's the, it's the direction, it's the quiet moments. The opening shot of the episode is, you know, the camera just moving around this bedroom. There's a quick flash of lightning, a sound of thunder, and ultimately building up to the phone ringing. And there's no one there. There's not even a dial tone. It's just silent. And this old woman who's woken up, hears this, is all creeped out to the point where she wants to call the, the phone company the next day. And that kind of is what gets the, the ball rolling in the story. But a lot of the episode is her becoming more and more frustrated and concerned that she's getting these phone calls, which escalate to sort of a static sound and then eventually a voice uh, speaking to her. And I think I liked what the reveal was. Again, it was very simple. Um, I think the fact that the first time we hear the sound of what sounds like a voice is actually moaning. It's I actually chuckled because it sounded like a zombie. And then when you find out kind of where the voice is coming from, it actually makes a lot of sense that it sounds like a zombie. So we'll we'll get into that. Yeah, I, I definitely remember making predictions at the end of the last review about what this was just based on the synopsis or what it was going to turn out to be. And I don't remember if I was right. I'm sure one of the ideas was probably that death was coming for her. It's not that. Uh, at least not literally. I mean, arguably death is on its way because she's old. <laughs> but I don't think that's literally what the, the phone calls are. I think this is more about the regret that you have when you are in your final stages of your life and maybe you realize that you've made your own bed in some ways. That's kind of what the episode is is getting at. Yeah, like I say, it's the quiet moments, it's the build-up, it's the moments of tension when she's at peace for a second and then the phone will ring again and she'll look over sharply because it becomes almost this uh, this dreadful reminder constantly, even though she's not, she's not really aware throughout the episode what it's a reminder of, but it's this thing that it keeps hounding her throughout the episode. And she's calling the phone company, the phone company's looking into it, her carer, who comes and looks after her, because she's, you know, she's an old woman, she's in a wheelchair, she pays someone to come and help her out of the house during the day. She keeps telling her to just leave the phone off the hook. It's not a big deal. Uh, the phone company will sort it out, but she's getting a bit more agitated. She's becoming a little bit more worked up, a little bit more obsessed. And that's very much what a lot of the episode is. The ad break in this episode was quite early, actually. Like, I've commented occasionally on episodes of Twilight Zone where the ad break's like surprisingly late. It's like 18 minutes into a 25-minute episode. Uh, the ad break on this one was 10 minutes in. Because it went to the ad break music and I went, wait a minute. Are we already like that far in? And it, it wasn't quite that far. It was, it was only 10 minutes, but it felt strange and notable. But it worked, obviously. They, they chose the moment very wisely because they chose it after the first time we hear like a proper voice on the phone. So it really, you know, amped up the creepiness. It wasn't just silence. It wasn't just static. It was this sort of zombie-like moaning and then eventually a voice going, Hello, I want to speak to you. You know, I'm hamming it up a little bit, but that was kind of the gist of, of, of what it was saying. And the, the resolution to the episode, and I really like some of the details of this, is that the phone company eventually gets back to her and says, that, oh, we've looked into the problem, uh, we've traced kind of where you're getting some kind of signal from, but it's not actually a phone call, it's actually just the phone line is down. Uh, the cable's literally, you know, dangling on the ground. So it'll, get, it'll be getting fixed tomorrow, but no one could have actually been making calls. But this does not satisfy Elva, the old lady, because she has been hearing this voice. She's like, that's not possible, I've been hearing something. She says, how, how, how I've been getting calls, What's going on? And the woman from the phone company says, look, you couldn't have been getting calls from anyone. There's not even anyone there. It's a cemetery. And that's the moment where it kind of clicks. Okay, all right. So she's, she's been talked to from someone from the cemetery. Although at this point, like, it could have easily went down a path of it's not someone she knew. It's just a random person from the cemetery. 
Uh, it can be, basically what we see when, when she actually gets there, and her carer is not thrilled about bringing her out here. She thinks it's weird and unhealthy for her. But they come out to the cemetery, and what they find is, is that the phone line that has fallen is dangling over a, uh, over a gravestone and is like sitting in someone's grave effectively. And the idea clearly is that there's literally messages coming from the person's grave up through the phone line. I like this for a couple of reasons. One, it's someone specific. It's not just someone out of the ether trying to contact her. Obviously, when it turns out to be someone from her past, there's a bit of coincidence there. You could argue fate's playing a role or whatever. But what I like about it is that, and what, what I like about a lot of stories that deal with like static and f old phones and old TVs and radio signals and stuff like that, is that unlike the modern digital age where everything's very precise, there's this idea of like tuning through frequencies and hearing something weird or picking up something like that. This kind of plays into that a little bit and this idea that there's just a phone line, a cable just happens to be going somewhere it's not meant to be and it's picking something up otherworldly. Uh, but of course, and I thought it was just a random person up until she obviously sees the grave and sort of starts reacting to it and it becomes clear, no, this is someone she knows. And it turns out it's her fiancé. When she was young, she was to be married, and just before the wedding, she insisted on driving a car, and apparently she always insisted on things and kind of dominated them. Uh, she got into a car accident. She was, uh, you know, paralyzed. Uh, that's why she's in the wheelchair. And her would-be husband was completely killed and obliterated by going through the window or something like that. So it's like, okay, this is interesting. And one of the things that at the start of the episode, when things haven't quite got tense yet, and it's just kind of like, oh, there was this weird phone call last night, but she's not concerned about it yet, is that she complains about how she's not receiving any mail from people, that she feels very lonely. And that's really a theme here. And ultimately, that night, at the end of the episode, she intentionally waits by the phone. Uh, in fact, she doesn't even let it ring. She just picks it up and starts talking into it and wants to talk to her fiancé from all those years ago, he won't answer at first. And she says, hey, please, it's me. Come on, like, talk to me. The voice responds with, but you told me to leave you alone. And she did. The last time this phone rang, and she was really scared, she said, stop calling me, leave me alone. And, you know, she, she was very adamant about it. And then the voice just stops, and she gets sad and gets upset and sort of realizes that she's told this love of her life, has contacted her through supernatural means from beyond the grave, the most miraculous thing that have ever happened to her, a chance to communicate with someone like this, and she's kind of shooed him away. And that moment of reflection is kind of the bitter note the episode ends on. And I think what really the episode's doing here is that it's showing that she is so lonely in the way she is, and the life she has right now is because presumably ever since this accident in her youth, she has turned people away. She's not wanted to 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 mingle or let her feelings out. She she's been exiled by herself, and I think this sort of ending here of realizing she's been pushing people away her whole life is kind of what this represents. So you know, I, I think the resolution is very simple. The actual subtext is what gives it the meat and gives it the weight. Uh, but no, the, the, the resolution based being it's someone from her past calling her from the grave because the phone line is touching her, touching the grave. That's, that's, that's perfectly simple. I love it. I think that's, uh, it, for a 25 minute story where you can't get into too many complex convoluted ideas, you want to keep it simple. I think that is just nice and easy to get. As soon as you see the phone line dangling over the gravestone, you just kind of get it. It's like, okay, okay. It's the person who's buried here who's talking to her. And then the fact that it kind of is more this self-reflective thing about her character. Um, because she is. She, she's snippy with her carer. She's snippy with the the woman on the phone that's trying to help her from the phone company. And she's very, you know, annoyed that they're not, they're not doing what they're supposed to do. She says, oh, I, I don't pay you for night, so why would you try and help me at night? She's very... Like, not like a complete monster. This isn't like that episode with the uncle who was building the robot and he's like an absolute scheming bastard. This is really just someone bitter who isn't that pleasant to people. Not to the point where they're, again, a monster, but just a little unpleasant and therefore turns people away. And then realizing that that might be why she is so lonely and why she is on her own here at the end of her life. Um, 
I, I thought the ending was kind of poignant for that. Like, it didn't give you a big sort of thing where she learns a lesson and is, and is happy because she's going to change or, or, or whatever. It just ends on this really kind of sad note of her lying there in the bed alone, realising kind of this harsh lesson that even the love of her life um, has, has sort of turned away from her <laughs> from beyond the grave. And it's worth mentioning as well, the voice even says, like, you told me to leave you alone. He kind of adds on, and you all, I always do what you tell me, kind of harking back to her bossing him around before he died. And that even now, he's, he's, like, he's going to obey that, that order and therefore not speak to her. And that's just going to leave her more alone. Further adding to this idea of her making her own bed and now she has to lie in it. In fact, literally, she's lying in a bed <laughs> at the end of the episode. I'm not sure that we're going for that specifically as a sort of wink-wink, but it, it works anyway. It works regardless. So that's nice. Uh, the performance from the lead actress, uh, Gladys Cooper, I, I think is really solid. I think the episode would completely fail if she didn't play this well. Like, if, if she wasn't reacting to the phone call and getting more anxious... Because it, as much as there's a supporting character or two uh, in the story, it fundamentally is all about her and her growing tension and frustration at these phone calls. And this idea, that sharp ringing sound kind of invading the audio space, it, it works both for the character and the audience because you'll have just a very quiet scene and then this harsh ringing will come in and it's like an alarm going off that something's not right. And it becomes to this becomes this thing where she's dreading the phone calls and when she's told to just leave it off the hook and that'll solve the problem. And I was expecting that not to solve the problem. I thought it was going to ring even though it was off the hook at one point, just because Supernatural. But she can't help it, right? In fact, there's a, a scene... Oh, is it before the first time he speaks or maybe a later phone call? I can't remember what phone call it was. But there's one where she's leaving the phone off the hook because she's getting really agitated by it. But when she's lying there in the bed, she starts to get really restless because she's obsessing over the sound of the dial tone. Because, you know, like, this might be something younger people don't really realize about older phones, but you can hear this dial tone um, on them. And she can just hear this hum coming from the phone. And it's like it's, you know, making her mad and upset. It's like this constant reminder she's avoiding something. And then as soon as she actually puts the, the phone back on, uh, so she can finally ignore that and go to sleep, it starts ringing. So, yeah, it, it almost feels like that hum is just a reminder that she's avoiding something that she shouldn't avoid. So, yeah, as far as the character study goes, it's a it's a great little episode. As far as a creepy uh, episode that plays on the, the tension, also a good episode. It has moments where the direction gets to shine because there's a lot of quiet moments, like with the phone going off to, to interrupt that silence. All that stuff's solid. Uh, so... Yeah, really, really solid little episode. It's definitely... We've had a lot of really good episodes recently, even if they've not been, like, all-timers. I wouldn't say this is an all-timer necessarily, but it's, it's I'd say it's above most of what we've recently had in the season. It feels like just a, a, just a little step above those kind of slightly flawed but really compelling idea episodes that I've been talking about a lot recently. This one's just straight into the outright good with really no caveats. So, yeah, night call. Uh, good stuff. Um, there was no next time on at the end of the episode, surprisingly. It just went straight to the straight to the credits. But we have IMDb. Um, I'm not sure why there wasn't one. Maybe they just ran a little over time with the, the story. Maybe they didn't have the extra... I don't know, what, what does it usually take for Rod to say what's coming next time? Like 30 seconds? Maybe they just couldn't cut 30 seconds out of the episode and they thought, nah, we'll just we'll give it to the episode this time. I don't know. Or maybe it's because it was going on a break for a couple of months or something and they just didn't like want to like, advertise the next one too far in advance. I'm not sure. But regardless, uh, the next episode is called From Agnes With Love. Here's a description from IMDb. A computer technician begins to take advice for his love life from Agnes, the computer he works with. Okay. All right. All right. All right. We're doing a little bit of AI, a little bit of horror. Um... This is interesting to get these kind of stories from Twilight Zone because they're so, they're so like from the infancy of these types of like stories. The idea of like computers and AI becoming like that smart and someone relying on it. I feel like doing a story like this in the 60s feels like we're at the dawn of that type of story idea. And I'm sure there's maybe some examples from before then. 
or other stories that you could say are it's basically the same thing just without a computer necessarily but i do think that's quite interesting also this next one is directed by richard donner who of course is a is a famed director he did some other big twilight zone episodes but he also did a lot of big movies that i like so uh all right we'll see how it is i'm looking forward to it so that's my thoughts on this week's episode of twilight zone thank you very much for joining me Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. It helps out a bunch more people will find us. And if you want to support us financially, you can head over to patreon.com slash TV and help keep the lights on and all the content coming. But thank you very much for joining. I always appreciate it. Keep watching TV in the Twilight Zone.